Well, today, I forgot to put on my shirt. Hold on. And I forgot to uh, bring what we're going to talk about today. Ultra Labs access points. Notice how one sounded heavier than the other? This one's empty. That's because I've been using one for two weeks. Now, in my defense, this video would have been out a little bit earlier um, had it not been 40 degrees so I didn't die in my room because it's been too hot. I've had a lot of time to play with these devices. I left the Pro to do this video. They're both dual band access points, but one's a two by two and one's a four by four. And this one's ready to go outside. Mine's not gonna go outside because mine's gonna live in the house. So today, I'm gonna go through setting it up. I was really, I, I wanted to set this video up or this um, access point up long time ago because I needed time to figure out how good it was gonna, or how hard it was gonna be to set up. I'm gonna spoil this right now, but it's ex it is extremely easy to set up, manage, and it's fast. When you take a device and connect to the SSID, boom, you're on. You know, some SSIDs, you connect to it, kind of waits a couple of seconds, and then it connects. These are very, very quick. Not only are they quick to set up, but they're quick to connect to. So today, I'm going to unbox this one, show you guys the basics. There's nothing really anything special inside the box. The access point and a couple other things. And then after that, I'm going to show you guys how to start from scratch. Now there's other videos out there of setting them up and going over settings and stuff like that, but nobody's actually set it up and done a video where you start from scratch, from the start to the finish. And that's what I'm gonna do today. This product has gotta be the best product I've used in 10 years. Not because it's simple, not because I got this for free like all the other reviewers, but because actually they've actually started listening to what people want out of a product. The first thing I really like is how quick they are on the support forms to answer questions. Now, I've been on there for about two and a half weeks. There's some pretty amateur basic stuff on there, but you know what? They tackle that. They help the person. They don't just let it go and somebody else has to do it. They actually staff care about the product and they help you on the form. So, to me, that's a really good start. The second one is, if you do need support, they have a number you can phone. Go to the Unify website and find a, website, or a phone number that you can phone and actually speak to somebody with your issue. Good luck with that. So anyways, we're gonna go jump in and show you the product, and then after that, we'll show you the account. This one's already open. Yep, because I'm using it. And right now, I'm actually connected wireless. When I first set this up, I was doing a bunch of network testing and stuff like that, and I'm like, I couldn't get to one of my other networks. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I figured it out. I'm like, oh, my Ethernet cable's unplugged. I totally forgot that I connected my Mac Studio via wireless in, for the access point that I have, and I was using it. Didn't even notice a difference. I totally forgot that I did that. Whoops. Nice. We got the access point itself. It's got some weight to it. It's got a nice big heat sink on the back of it. Probably got that upside down. And it's a nice aluminum backing with a plastic front. Pretty nice, I like that. Got this plastic so that way when it shuffles around in the box it doesn't scratch anything. We got a quick start guide. Just a piece of paper. You scan that with the QR code and it'll take you to a website with a nice document to set it up. Funky access point mount. T-bar ceiling mount that twists and clips on for the... And then we have all these little screws inside of this thing nicely laid out so you don't find... or so you don't lose them. And the access point. I'm not going to plug in the access point yet. I'm going to show you guys how to set up the account first. I'm gonna show you how fast this thing adopts and works. So let's jump into that. We will go to Alta Labs' website. So it's alta.inc. If you ever forget where to go to log in, it's on their website at the very top, up here. We'll go log in. Now, my personal account that I was playing with, I was using a Google account, so there was no 2FA, but I'm gonna set it up with this, and I believe we could set up 2FA for that. 
I strongly advise people to use 2FA. Very, very, very strongly advise you to do that. So let's go. Don't have account? Let's sign up. Jason's Lab. Jason's Lab.ca. I'm going to create a password. So there we go. You will get an email to your email address that you have to confirm the account. Once you do that, you can sign in. So once we sign in, blank configuration. Before we go too far, let's do the 2FA. So I believe we go up to here, my account, and then right here, we have enable the app base or the SMS based. I don't really use SMS based, but we use, I use app base. So let's click on enable the app. We'll click on that. I use uh, Authy. So what we do is we'll go create a new account. We'll scan the QR code. There we go. It adds the account, save, and then it gives us a code. So 323217, confirm, save changes. Now I'm going to sign out, sign back, and make sure that works. Sign in. It wants my code. 933106. That is the thing I do for anything that I set up. Any kind of piece of equipment that I test and use, if there's no 2FA, kind of don't put too much effort into it because there is a lot of security things these days. So having that two-step, key. Okay, so now that we have my favorite little PoE switch over here on the desk, the Edge Switch Light. 150, I think it is. I'm going to plug in this access point, then we're going to see how fast this uh, works. So let's go to devices first. Uh, the networks, good. Nothing there. Let's see how fast this works. And yes, they did send me the shirt and hat. Okay. We will plug in that, and we got to plug in my laptop or my Mac. You have to be on the same network, or else it won't find it. Okay. My lap network's plugged in. We got an IP address. Now, we'll plug in the access point. Let's actually refresh this page, make sure we're logged in still. Yep. Okay, you guys ready? Now, these access points call home and they set your region automatically. So these can be shipped all over the world and not have to do any of the region settings for the different bands that you're allowed to use. There's our access point. And it's on older firmware, but we'll leave that. And it'll do it automatically. So let's go set up. Nope. Oh. I'm going to give it a name first. Let's see here. Jason's lab ap okay it is connected let's check this thing out hopefully you guys can see that let me move this you like i like how this window floats around so you can see things i think that's a pretty sweet idea anything in here these are all set to auto that's fine Let's see if we can create a network. So, all right, well, let's add an access or wire for a Wi-Fi network. Let's go here. I'm gonna call this Jason's lab main. And the password we're gonna create, and this will be the standard network. Okay. And now we're gonna keep the same SSID. And I really, really like this feature. If we go standard and then we click guest, we can go like this and put in the password. They have to be different because different passwords will connect you to different networks. We'll go add or save. Also, we need to make sure that we don't turn off or the don't turn on the, um, the filters. So I'm gonna bypass the filters on this one and we're gonna ignore the schedules. I'll do a video on the schedules before, wicked feature. Okay, and then we'll save this. On my phone, I should be able to see Jason's lab main right there already set up. And 
going to type in a password. If I type in the password for the standard network, which would be the main network, it'll connect me to that. If I type in the guest password that I just set, it'll ch put me into the guest network. I'm going to connect my laptop and my iPad to the guest network. If you set the guest network, it will be isolated, meaning they can't talk back and forth, but they have the same IP address. So I'm going to add my phone to the main network, join, connected, ready to go. And if we go up here to dashboard, we can see devices, no name. Oh, I know why that is. Because I have private Wi-Fi address automatically does that on iPhones. And I think it does for um, uh, Androids too. So it's a default thing. Every time you connect to a different SS or a new SSID, it does that. So now, as you can see up here, we can see my iPhone. I'm going to connect my laptop and my Mac Studio to this by unplugging. And I'm going to unplug the network cable. Boom. Connected. And it shows you instantly, like just like that. Okay. I'm going to unplug the Ethernet cable now. Now we have the Mac connected. I'm going to check the Mac Book Pro very, very quick. First time I didn't type in the password properly. So as you can see, all the devices are on the network. Can we ping the other device? So it says my MacBook is at 106. Let's bring up terminal. Shouldn't be able to ping 192.168.1.106. That's because I'm on the guest network. It still has internet connection. It can go out to the internet. It can do all those things, but they can't talk back and forth. Now you can change that to like IoT guest networks, or if you want, you can change them to the same standard network, the same standard network that all talk about. The nice thing about this is you don't need a firewall. So if you send one of these to mom and dad's house that has the basic router that comes with the ISP, they plug them in with a PoE injector and you can just set them up. You could set the IoT network and this, and this will do all the blocking built into it. Sweet. Like that feature. Let's talk about blocking applications. We can go to settings, filter, and blocking applications. Now we can choose what network blocks that. The guest network, because I didn't uncheck any of these settings in order to schedule and bypass the filter, if I put the schedule or the blocking apps on right now, the guest network won't be able to get to say facebook.com. I'll show you. But my computer, since it's on the private network or the main network, will be able to get to it. I'll show you. So facebook.com. Okay. So if we enable that by going to settings, filter, Block applications, say Facebook, right? Put that in there, it's blocked, and we go save. The guest network will not be able to get to facebook.com. Still on the guest network, it didn't auto change back to my other one, facebook.com. But this computer can get to facebook.com. That's pretty sweet, I like that. Awesome feature because you'll want to um, add that for the kids maybe or TikTok or anything like that. You can use this to block um, pages so people can't go to them and stuff like that, especially on the guest network. I didn't check adult stuff. I don't think there's, I think these are just, let's type in, let's get rid of Facebook and type in adult. No, there's no, there's no um, sensory stuff like that in there. There's no uh, adult material stuff, but... Maybe that'll come. Maybe that's a suggestion for them. So we got the Wi-Fi. We got the networks. The dashboard is very, very good. Oh, are we still on Wi-Fi? I haven't changed that. What do we get for fast.com? Through an access point? That's pretty good. I did want to check one more thing here. Oh, wrong one. The website uh, devices, we're all online. It's showing us what device is connected to what network. So my MacBook Pro is connected to the guest network. But let's see the access point. Oh, I think that's under here. Still isn't updated, but there's an arrow there. So let's click update, see what it does. Update. Do you want to update that Jason's Lab access point? Right now. 
Probably going to lose connection, but that's okay. Let's see here. It's connected. Oh, and it's at the 1.1F network. So let's connect back to this one. Connect. And see if anything has changed. Okay, we're connected. I'm going to unplug the access point, and I'm going to put it way over there in the other room. And then I'm going to see how fast the network speeds are and stuff. Hold on. So I moved the access point way over in the other room over there, sitting on a desk facing up. Let's see what the speed tests are like now. Make sure that we're connected to the right network first. Hold on. Uh, Wi-Fi. Nope. Connect. Jason's lab main. Refresh this page. And no name, no name. <laughs> Everything disconnected because it's auto connecting to the other one. So let's make sure here. Okay. All the devices are back here. I don't know what this device is. This is probably my Mac that uh, came up, my Mac Studio before. So let's do a speed test. Eight hundred and thirty, and I'm probably twenty-five feet away. Maybe 26, to be exact. Yeah? I mean, what's our upload? Eight seventy down and 570 up. And it's just facing up in the room there doing nothing special, not even close to it, or it's not even, it's not even properly mounted and I'm getting good speeds to that. I think that's a pretty good thing. I'm gonna have to uh, swap out some stuff in my house here and move to this thing. A couple things I went over in the video. Um, can't think of anything else that I want to go over right now, but I do have another video of showing some more stuff. I might go purchase a switch pretty quick here so that way I can convert everything over. So, believe the Sherp did help with the network speeds. Just joking, it didn't. Um, I want to thank you guys, those guys, for watching, and you guys for watching, and Ulta Labs for sending me the equipment to play with and learn. So, I'm going to sign off here. If you have a question, let me know. I'll put a link below to the products and my email address and go from there. And uh, kudos to, to these guys for making a really nice, easy um, GUI to use. Probably took a long time to do that, so good on you guys. See you later.